Yes, what is that M? Say again? Oh, it's calcium. Sorry, yes. Thank you. They want the, or the, give it to you so that you can get the molar mass and the molar mass for calcium is 40. Okay, so mole is mass over molar mass. The mass is 10, the molar mass is 40 and that gives you 0 0.25 moles. Yes? Not yet. I did record it. I haven't posted it yet. I'll post it not tonight because it's movie night tomorrow. <coughs> no, I've changed it. It's Jeffro Marx Paris. I will post it on the group. Remind me to post it. <laughs> okay, not for question B, question C. Okay, they ask uh, determine the mole of molecules. So the mole of molecules. In the mass is 22 grams, and they give you carbon dioxide. And the reason they give you that is so that you have the molar mass, which is 20, uh, 44 for carbon dioxide. Okay, so mole is mass over molar mass. It's 22 divided by 44, and that gives you 0 0.5 moles. <coughs> okay, and then you have to do E. The ask. How many ions, the mole of ions? Okay, so not molecules, not atoms, ions. Do we have in sodium chloride if the mass is 5, oopsie, 5.85 grams? Okay, now why do they give us sodium chloride? For the molar mass, which is 58.5. Okay, so you go, you say, right, moles is mass over molar mass. The mass is, I thought, okay, just listen. The mass is, <coughs> sorry, 5.85. The molar mass is 58.5. So that gives you 0 0.1 moles. But that is 0 0.1 moles of what? 0 0.1 moles of the whole molecule, mole molecules of sodium chloride. So your answer is 0 0.1 mole molecules of sodium chloride. They ask for the ions specifically. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to write how sodium chloride splits up into its ions. So you're going to write on the left hand side sodium chloride in a Cl. Then you're going to write an arrow and then you show that it splits up into the sodium in a plus ion. So you write in a plus plus Cl minus. So one molecule gives you how many ions? If you look at that um, equation that you wrote down. One molecule, the sodium chloride, gave you a sodium ion and the chlorine ion. So one molecule gives you how many ions? Two ions. Okay? I didn't ask how many sodium ions or how many chlorine ions. I asked just how many ions. So the ions all together. So one molecule. Oh, <coughs> Okay, so I want you to write underneath your equation that you just write, uh, wrote. I want you to say one molecule. Molecule gives you two ions. Okay, so if you have 0 0.1 mole of molecules, how many mole of ions do you have? If one molecule gave you two ions, So you have sodium chloride gave you the sodium ion and the chlorine ion. 
So one molecule gives you two ions, because you have this ion and that ion, so the two ions. Now he's just calculated at the top that you have you had 0.1 mole of molecules. So how many mole of ions will you have? 0.2, right? So the answer is 0.2 mole ions. So this will say mole of ions is 0 0.2. Okay, that was your homework, right? What's wrong, Mo? Well? Um, yes, you missed out. We were busy yesterday. Okay, I'm now on page five in your notes, please. Did you go fetch your glasses yesterday, Mo? Well? Did you fetch your glasses yesterday? Do you always wear glasses? Uh, what's wrong? You had more homework? You have a question? I only have Afrikaans notes left. Okay, so the us there um, on page five. Um, how many potassium ions are there in three moles of potassium carbonate? Okay, so let's start with an info table. They ask how many potassium ions? What symbol goes with that? Like, did they ask the mole of potassium ions? No. How many potassium ions? What symbol goes with that? See ya. Uh, the, the, big N. the big N. They want the number of ions. I talk. The number of ions. Potassium ions specifically. Okay. They say there we have three moles of potassium carbonate. Okay, now I'm just going to see what formula do I think I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use this one. Yes, because that's what they want. Do I have the uh, number of uh, molecules, Avogadro's number? Yes, I do. There's a constant that you'll find on your data sheet. Do I have the mole? I have the mole of what? I have the mole of potassium carbonate, the molecule. Do I have the mole of the ions? No. Are they the same? We don't know. How will we find out? You're going to write an equation like we just did. You're going to say potassium carbonate is actually, it consists of, it's made out of two potassium ions and a one carbonate ion. Um, Anya and Chantal, that is apart. Okay, so you can see I split it up into its positive ions and negative ions. So you have two potassium ions and one carbonate ion. Okay, so the mole ratio is one molecule gives you two potassium ions and one carbonate ion. So if this mole here is three moles, then what is the mole of potassium ions? Six moles, right? Because this ratio is one to two. One a molecule gives me two potassium ions. So if I have three molecules, then I'm going to get six potassium ions. Okay. <coughs> So now I can go to my equation. Now I can say N is big N over NA. My moles is 6. 
I want to get the number of particles and that is Avogadro's number that you'll find on your data sheet. And you get that to be what, Lonnie? In your head. I believe in you. What's six times six? Say again. What is two times six? Here we go. Potassium ions. Now, if you were to type that into your calculator, you would have got 3.612 times 10 to the power 24. But that's exactly the same thing. Because if you move the comma one place to there, then that changes, it goes one up. Sharp. Okay. Uh, on to the next page, page six. <coughs> Says there, determine the volume of eight grams of oxygen gas at STP. Okay. You read the word STP. You see that it is a gas, you smile, because it means you can use that 22.4 um, constant. Okay? Then let's just check quickly. They ask us the volume. They give us a mass of 8 grams. They speak of oxygen. And they say we're at STP. What that, is, um, that means we're allowed to use that 22.4. Okay, let's just check. Let me do some planning. What formula am I going to use? Uh, they ask for volume, so I'm thinking I'm going to use this formula here. In that formula, I have that because I'm at STP. They ask for the volume, so I need to figure that out. So I need the mole. Do I have the mole? No. So Sepo, help me. Help me help you. I need the mole. What other information do I have that I can use? That's true. Okay, yes. You can. Who are you calling? A relo. Incoming call. The second formula. She says, okay, ma'am, I see we have a problem. We need to calculate mole first before we can use this formula. She says, I see we have a mass. So maybe I can use the second formula that looks like that. Then I can calculate the mole. Let's see. So if I have that information, I can calculate mole. And then I can go calculate the volume. Okay, do I have the molar mass? No, but yes, I can calculate it because I do have the formula. It's oxygen. One oxygen is 16, but it's a diatomic molecule, so it gives us 32. Okay, so this question also will count five marks. Five marks normally tells you two calculations. Okay, <clears throat> so we are first going to get the mole with the help of the mass formula. It's 8 over 32. And that gives us a fourth, which is 0 0.25 mole. And now we are going to calculate the volume. The mole is 0 0.25. We want the volume. That is 22.4. And how are you calculating for us?
of een gedeelte hier 4. 0.0. Say the whole thing. Why do you feel you should get a 5? Five point six. I do. Yo. My pen second. Okay. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Okay. So before I go on, your homework will be um number three. Okay, and at number three, they ask the, at B and C, they ask how many um, per, uh, oxygen ions are present, how many chloride ions are present. I mean, just, you can tell me, in this one molecule, you have two chlorine ions. You understand? Okay, so you don't have to say times 6,02 times 10 to the power 23. You don't have to do that, just... You see there's two chlorine ions. You see there's X amount of oxygens. Okay, so you have to do number three. Then I want you to also do, please, number four. At number four, I want you to do number D. And number G. D and G. Okay. At D, just check. They give you 0 0.32 kilograms of oxygen not grams kilograms so you have to convert it okay right then back to your notes <clears throat> okay now we're going to do percentage composition okay it's like when we're in school and the department asks us for some st statistics they ask okay in your school um <coughs> how many um, let's say our school is about 600 learners and they want to know what percentage of your learners are English speaking what percentage of your learners are girls okay that's what they want to know we must give in that stick. okay now let's say of the 600 people how many are English let's say about 200 about a third, is it a third? Maybe a bit less, but let's say 200, just to round off. Okay, so 200 of the 600 people are English, and how many would be girls? Let's say 330. Okay. All right, but they didn't ask the exact number that, uh, that are girls, or the exact number that is English. They want the percentage composition they want the percentage of english speaking learners then we will say okay if 200 of the 600 are english then 200 over 600 times 100 gives you what mm. 33.333 percent 33.33 percent are english if they ask how many are girls, then we'll say 330 over 600 times 100, and that gives you what? 55%. Okay, so you get the idea of how do we calculate percentage. You take the thing that you want, let's say that specifically, over the total times 100. Then, like you do when you get back your test or whatever, you quickly calculate what is the percentage that you got. Okay, right, same thing here. The percentage composition of a substance can be calculated from its chemical formula. You say, okay, what you first do is you get the total molar mass, then you find the mass of each element, and then you express it as a percentage. Okay, I know you guys don't even read, so let's see what we must do. They ask, determine the percentage composition 
of potassium permanganate. Potassium permanganate, that's the name. Say it again. Potassium permanganate. It is a purple crystal. Potassium permanganate. Manganate. Exactly like you um, pronounce it, you spell it. Permanganate. Okay, so what you do, first of all, you get the total molar mass of the whole thing. Okay, so that I did for you. Now we want to get the percentage potassium. Okay, so that is the mass of the whole thing. But what is the mass of just potassium in there? How many potassiums do we have? One. So the mass of one potassium is 39. And the total mass of the thing is 158. And then you're going to say times 100. Okay. Twenty four point six. Okay. If you look at uh, manganese, there's one manganese, so it's fifty five over one five eight times a hundred. Gives you thirty four point eight one percent. And then if we look at oxygen, you see that we have four oxygens. So for oxygen, we need to multiply its mass by four. Okay, because there's four oxygens, so it's four times 16 over 158 times 100. Okay, now how can you check that you're more or less on the correct path is if you add all these percentages together, you must get 100%. Okay, more or less. Why do I say more or less? Because you might have rounded up or down incorrectly. Okay, or you might have rounded up correctly, but somewhere it just happens that you have 333, 333, 333. Then you get, point, you get 99% or 99 Okay, but that is, that is perfect, that's fine. Okay, so just when you add the percentages together in this instance, we get exactly 100%. Okay, let's quickly check the next one. They ask them, determine the percentage water of the crystallization in copper sulfate, the hydrated molecule. You know, I showed you this copper sulfate? Yes? No? I did. Because you had to calculate the molar mass in the previous chapter. But I'll show you again. I told you not to lick it, not to eat it. Someone, I think Holly said it, it looks like sugar. of water not the percentage composition just the percentage water so now you're going to take just the molar mass of water which is 5 times 18 over the total mass of the total molecule times 100 Here's Courtney. Uh, 36.07 percent. Okay, next one is a question that they ask. Now we do it now, and then they ask it at the end of matric again, and then nowhere in between. 
Okay, so something that you should memorize. AKA, don't burn your grade 10 notes at the end of grade 10. Are you guys one of those people that does that? So don't do it for science. Do it for all your other subjects, but not science. Okay, they ask, what mass of nitrogen is there in a 50 kilogram bag of ammonium nitrate fertilizer? Where do we use fertilizers, Orna? Where in, in, to do what? To grow. Okay. So fertilizers we use to help crops grow. Um, you get different types of fertilizers. Some fertilizers help the um, uh, roots to grow deep and wide and big. Some fertilizer, uh, fertilizers help the plant's fruit to be more flavorful. My words are done for the day. Flavor, flavor, flavorful. <laughs> Some fertilizers um, help to uh, make the plants more um, absorbent to heat and water. And, and so you get different types of fertilizers. How do I know that? My husband works with fertilizers. So we have this conversation daily. Okay, right. So they want to know, of this 50 kilogram bag of ammonium nitrate, what is the mass of nitrogen specifically? Okay, so what you're going to do, I'm giving you the steps here. You're first going to get what is the percentage of nitrogen in this bag. Okay, so I already gave you the total molar mass of ammonium nitrate. Now, we have nitrogen twice in there. We have, there we have nitrogen and there we have nitrogen. Okay, so don't just say once. We have twice we have nitrogen. So it is 2 times 14 over 80 times 100. So 35% of that is <coughs> nitrogen. So now of this 50 kilogram bag that we have, 35% of it is nitrogen. So we want to know exactly, is it 8 kilograms, 2 kilograms, 7 kilograms? So now we're going to say 30, 35 over 100 times 50. Seventeen point five. Seventy seven zero. How can of the fifty kilogram bag seventy kilograms be? Oh, <laughs> Seventeen point five kilograms is nitrogen. Okay. Sharp. So, a bit more homework for you. Okay, is um, on page, what is this? Page 14, question 5. I want you to do, not everything, I think that's a bit silly. I want you to do, let's do B and C. Ah, B and D, sorry, B and D. Okay.